For more on all of this, let's bring in our headliner, Ari Fleischer, a former White House press secretary and Fox News contributor. So if you were in this White House, uh, would you consider the danger has passed now? The, the, the answers are in. Mueller has his, uh, his, his paperwork. I would guess that the process is likely coming to an end, but the conclusion of that process will have me scared to death because you still don't know. You just don't know what Bob Mueller is going to decide. If he decides that he's got a legal case, a criminal case, an impeachable case, he can make it. If he says there's no collusion, he has no case, then you're home free. But nobody knows other than Bob Mueller. But, but still, you've had Alan Dershowitz and others lay out the fact that a perjury trap is for the innocent as well as the guilty, as well as the guilty. So just Absolutely. because the, the, the written questions, the answers have been turned in here, Ari, doesn't mean that Robert Mueller may not still want and need to sit down with the president and have him answer questions face to face. That could still happen, right? That, that's that's my point, Sandra. You know, every expert who is on the outside has their expertise, and I value it. But the truth is, nobody knows what Bob Mueller will decide to do. And nobody knows what Bob Mueller knows, what he's gathered, what he hasn't gathered, what contradictions he's found, what contradictions he hasn't found, uh, whether anybody else is in his radar that we haven't even talked about yet. That's the fact of one of these prosecutions. And unless you're on the prosecuting team, it's guesswork. It's expert guesswork. But that's why if I was on the inside, I still would be nervous until you hear from Bob Mueller because nobody knows what the path is other than that man. Well, the president's team seems pretty confident. Rudy Giuliani, of course, of course is one of his lawyers. Uh, Rudy Giuliani, in an interview with Axios, said, I don't think they, meaning Mueller's team, have any evidence of collusion of any kind. I think their obstruction case as a legal matter doesn't exist. So, again, the White House exuding confidence here. And, and I think that's to be expected. If you're innocent, that's exactly what you do convey. And so that isn't, to me, entirely credible, particularly on the collusion side, whereas we all know if there was evidence of collusion, it would have leaked a long time ago and we would know it. The obstruction issue is an opinion. If the president's lawyers, in their opinion, say there is no case for obstruction, none, the president can fire anybody he wants, that's their opinion. They're entitled to it. It's a well-grounded opinion. But the only opinion that matters is Bob Mueller's. If Mueller's opinion is that he's seen evidence of obstruction, then he can move on that front. And, and that's why, again, I'm not indicating it's one way or the other. I'm just saying that if you're in those seats of power next to the president and you want to protect the president, the honest answer is you don't know and you must wait for Bob Mueller. And, and like I said, again, if Bob Mueller comes out and does just what the administration is telling us, that mm -hmm. no collusion, no obstruction, Donald Trump is home free, and a huge number of people are going to owe him a huge number of apologies for putting him and the nation through this mess. We'll see if and when that happens. Meanwhile, Ari, a lot of talk still about this Washington yeah. <laughs> Post report about Ivanka Trump and the use of her private email uh, to conduct official government business. Her lawyer is hitting back uh, against what they are calling misinformation that is being peddled in the press, alleging that hundreds of emails were sent on that private email. Uh, but the newspaper story, when you go through it, it cites people familiar with records who reviewed them amid this public records lawsuit. Still, they contain no indication that any of the emails contain classified or sensitive government material. Reactions pouring in, including the president. He weighed in ahead of leaving for Mar-a-Lago yesterday. Listen. Ivanka did some emails. Uh, they weren't classified like Hillary Clinton. Yep. They weren't deleted like Hillary Clinton. What Ivanka did, it's all in the presidential records. Everything is there. There was no deletion. There was no nothing. What it is is a false story. Hillary Clinton deleted 33,000 emails. She had a server in the basement. That's the real story. There are important distinctions to be made here, Ari. Ab Look, this is nothing compared to what Hillary did. That is absolutely an invalid comparison. So the issue here is Ivanka's behavior. Forget Hillary. Was it appropriate or inappropriate, right or wrong? And here's where I come down on that. Go right to the facts and use your common sense. If we're talking about hundreds of emails sent, I receive about two to 300 emails a day. I probably send 50 to 100. So let, let's say it locates for me 50, and now it's hundreds. Let's say 500 were sent. That means for 10 days she sent emails. 
10 days, I think that's entirely reasonable in a transition for somebody who didn't know the rules to try to learn what the rules are. If it was me, I never would have sent one on a personal email because I worked in the White House, I know better. Somebody from the outside, if they did it for 10 days for crying out loud, that is not trying to get around a system. That's getting ready, learning the system, and then obeying all the rules. So use some common sense here. If this was thousands or tens of thousands, then I think you have a real pattern that lasted a long time if we're trying to get around the rules. This sure doesn't sound like that to me. And let me turn your attention real quickly to the situation regarding Saudi Arabia. The president is clearly not in the mood to implicate Mohammed bin Salman in the murder of this um, journalist. Uh, even though the CIA has pretty conclusively decided that, that he was behind that murder. Uh, what do you say about the president's stance here, Ari? You, you know, I, I think, frankly, this is what an outsider president is capable of doing. And he's doing essentially what all predecessors would have done, but using totally different words to do it. Uh, you know, for 50, 60 years, the United States and Saudi Arabia have a, had an uneasy friendship uh, marked by a lot of tolerance of things that are not Western, not modern, things we don't like. But we acquiesce to it. We accept it. In this case, the president just put out a raw statement that contained no values, nothing about enduring American values, right, wrong, things of that nature. I wish he had spoken differently. But he's right. President Trump is right, particularly given Iran. There are other strategic interests here. And what do the critics mm -hmm. want? Beyond the sanctioning the presidents carry out, do they want us to break relations with Saudi Arabia? Do they want us to topple Saudi Arabia? Do they want us to dictate what the succession should be in Saudi Arabia? I've yet to hear the critics say exactly what Donald Trump should do. So I think he's trying to maintain the strategic bigger picture in the Middle East, knowing that the Saudis and many nations around the world sometimes do abhorrent things. But are we severing ties to Russia? Are we severing ties to China? Are we severing ties to probably one third of African nations that engage in abhorrent behavior in terms of domestic dissonance? Yeah. Uh, it's a tough issue. I think the president is doing the right thing and using the wrong words to do it. Ari Fleischer, thank you very much for coming on the program on this Wednesday before the holiday. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. All Happy right. Thanksgiving.